at Fifth Grade Grizzlies, we are going to dive into our first unit of fifth grade standards and materials. You will notice in this first unit, they give us some review topics, but I promise you, we will get to all the fifth grade materials. We are going to cover some of the expectations that we need to have when going through our unit work so that we get the most out of math and so that everything you need is covered. So I want to talk about having a successful math time. The first thing I want to talk about is participation and responsibility. Participation is key. This can look a couple different ways. It can look like writing on your whiteboard when your teacher is saying to work the problem out. It can be working in a notebook or taking notes over what you see on your board. It also can and should be at some point sharing your answers in whatever format your teacher is giving you. If that's in the chat or raising your hand, whatever you're doing, it is very, very important that you are participating during math. This is a big responsibility of yours. It also helps show right away what you are understanding and what you're not understanding so we can adjust the lessons for you. The next thing is respect to one another. So participation can be pretty scary if you are not having respect from your classmates when you are willing to share or participate. You always should have respect towards one another when you are sharing or when someone else is sharing. Trying something new can be difficult and we need to give each other the freedom and the comfort to do that. The last thing is understanding you might not have it yet. Okay, I'm putting that in quotations because you don't have to have all the answers right now. The whole point of these units and lessons is that we are teaching you these standards, these different strategies, a different way to look at something. So if you don't have something right away, that's perfectly fine. That's where you should be. By the end of a unit or by the end of a few lessons over that topic, then yes, you should be starting to understand it you can't get frustrated and shut down because then your brain's not allowing you to learn all the things you don't know yet. Going to learn today is actually our first 10 minute math activity. So 10 minute math is a time that you will have with your class and with your teacher that is over a math strategy, either a review strategy or introducing something new. Our first one is called Quick Images. And before I show you the screen, I wanna go over a couple important things. Quick Images, it's in the name, it's quick, okay? You're going to want to pay full attention to the screen the whole time so that you don't miss anything. With Quick Images, each image is shown three times. The first time, I encourage you to just look and watch and process mentally. The second time, I encourage you to try to solve or to try out a strategy either mentally or on paper or pencil or something. You are using your strategies to solve. For the third time, it stays up. It does not flash and go away. It will stay up. That's the discussion and that important participation part. So let's try our first time together. Here's what the quick images will look like. It's just a timer. And so the directions for this quick image is to write different multiplication equations to model the total number of dots. So like I said, the first time I encourage that you watch and think, okay? Don't worry so much about writing them down yet. After the second time, I will give you plenty of time to begin writing down and answering the directions to write down different multiplication equations to model the total number of dots. Then the third time, you will discuss what you have. So here's the first one. As I said, it's quick, okay? So take, think about what you saw, double check that that's still what you saw this time, and then focus on the question write different multiplication equations to model the total number of dots. Okay. 
write those equations now. I am going to show it to you one more time, and this time it will stay up. It will not fade away. So if you have any additional equations that you think model could, could model the total number of dots there, go ahead and write those down now. Now I want you to take the rest of this time to talk with your classmates in whatever format your teacher has for you to talk about the equations you came up with. You are probably coming up with equations, the ones you can see right away because of how these are grouped is seven, because there are seven dots together, times eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or eight times seven, so that would just be a reversal. So that's one, that is not the only one, okay? So I hope you discuss and not only share what you have, but also explain how you got that, like I just did. I said that I did seven times eight because I see seven together, then eight groups of that seven. So you talk through the numbers. You're going to do the other two examples of this you're going to do the other two examples of this with your teacher later. So in this unit, you're going to hear two words used a lot. Those two words are arrays and dimensions. So let's talk about what they mean. What is an array? An array is a rectangle representing a multiplication problem. Okay, that's how we're using arrays in this unit. So what are dimensions? Dimensions are the length and the width outside of that array that would make up the multiplication problem. Okay, so let's talk about an example. I want you to think of the area that we did in the previous week. If you have an area of 24, what, is a pos what are possible dimensions that could get you to the area or an array of 24? Try to solve that now and then I will go through an example. There are possible examples of that. I picked one and I picked, there are 24 tiles in here. That means I have an array of 24 or an area of 24 with the dimensions of six and four. Some of you may have used different dimensions and we're going to go through a couple other examples here. So if this is my grid paper, there are many different ways I could put 24 tiles inside of an array. So I showed you the example of six and four. Another example that you may have thought of would be eight and three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So we'll draw that eight and down three and create my array of, with the dimensions eight and three. Since this is not solving for actual area, the units of measure does not matter. We're just visualizing our multiplication problem. So this is this would be representing the multiplication problem of 8 times 3 equals, how many are in there? 24. Also used 12 times 2. And that whole thing is 12. Still giving me an array of 24. This is on grid paper. Sometimes our numbers are going to be getting too big to use grid paper. And for those, we are going to use what we call unmarked arrays. So I could make that same array I just did, but instead of drawing it in 
or on a grid paper, I would just represent it by eight and three. And with pencil or marker, when you can write better than I can with my mouse pad here. So eight and three, and then two and 12 would not be as long, it would be longer, not as wide. So it'd be 12 and two. Okay, so those are the same representations that I had on my grid paper. If I go back, there's the same ones. These are just called unmarked arrays because there is no grid paper behind them with the tiles represented. So when you were solving for what dimensions you would use to make a array of 24, you were having, coming up with different combinations. So we came up with one times 24, two times 12, three, eight, and four and six, all giving us the answer of 24. So these equations and these numbers, what you multiply to get an answer is called a factor, okay? So the factors of 24 would be one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24. All of these factors of 24. So now that we've listed, listed some factors of 24, let's think of multiples of 24, okay? Some people can get this confused, get them mixed up. A factor is what can make our number. A multiple is what you get when you count by that number. So, or multiply it by each number. So, multiples of 24 would be 24, because that's times one. 48 times 2. Seventy-two. That's times three. And we keep going up from there and go on and on and on. So understanding these two terms are going to become extremely important in our next few activities. So the factors, just a reminder, are when you multiply the factors of a number, you get that number. So for example, factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. So the numbers that make up when multiplied, they make that number. A multiple of a number is gonna keep going up because it's when you take the number times each number. So this would actually keep going. So we have multiples of 24, 24, 48, 72, 96, 120, 144, and it could keep going, okay? It's gonna keep going 24 times whatever is another multiple, another multiple. You're going to use this knowledge of numbers and the help of arrays and dimensions to solve number puzzles.